This is Kelly Johnson, Vice President in charge of the Advanced Development Projects at Lockheed. I wish to present a motion picture which will highlight final manufacturing stages of Lockheed's D-21 pilotless aircraft in the first flight of the joint MD-21 configuration. These are 112 scale models of the drone and the launch vehicles in the subsonic wind tunnel. Here, aerodynamic characteristics of separation were tested by using two separate model mountings, each fully equipped with instrumentation. With this new wind tunnel technique, forces, moments, and pressures were measured on both vehicles simultaneously during the simulated mission and launch. This is the D-21 final assembly line. Far to the rear of the building, the mating facilities can be seen, while in an adjacent area is a detail assembly where smaller titanium parts take shape into bulkheads and frames. Details are pre-assembled with clamps in order to facilitate the spot welding process. After sub-assembly, Aircraft bulkheads and frames are riveted in place in this main fuselage structure fixture. Two of these jigs permit alternate and steady supply of airframes to the pickup station, wing mating area, and final assembly. Tool designers constantly check the fixture and jig design to ensure for the accuracy and the most rapid manufacturing technique possible. On June 20, 1964, the first assembled fuselage left the number one structural fixture. Leading edges were then attached at the mating jig. At final assembly, a removable tail fin was fitted, and the first D-21 was now ready for static testing. Sixteen different modes were used in the static test, from maneuvering speeds up to Mach 3.3 free flight conditions. Gauges measured the deflections of the structures of the combination during pushovers, pull-ups, engine out, and hatch jettison conditions, as well as loadings on the nose bearing, spike, engine, and rudder. The drone airframe sustained the design ultimate load for all the conditions in the static test. A vibration test conducted with the mated configuration, as well as the D-21 alone, determined natural frequencies and modes. Electronic pickups were attached to the aircraft at key points to measure deflections and determine resonant points. After thorough checkout and testing of the black boxes by subcontractors, the payload components were installed within the D-21 hatch assembly. Flight test instrumentation destined for early trial runs is also contained in this hatch area. Various weights and shapes were used in the development of the parachute configuration for the D-21 payload. This plastic hatch, reinforced with aluminum, was accurately weighted to simulate the 880 pounds of the actual payload unit. Flying at 18,000 feet, a C-130 dropped the hatch and parachute components, while a second similar aircraft maneuvered below to make an aerial recovery. By choosing this drop altitude, and the use of two aircraft. As many as four separate passes could be attempted before the package hit the earth. A twin-engine B-66 was employed to launch a bomb casing weighted at 880 pounds in order to test the free fall characteristics of the parachute configuration. Working their 280-foot steel tow lines and fair lead cranes with the techniques developed retrieving space capsules, the C-130 crews found little difficulty 
meeting the requirements of the increased weight of the D21 hatch, which is heavier than the largest capsule. Parachute design and harness arrangement proved ideally suitable for the hatch recovery system. On December 15, 1964, the first D-21 arrived at the desert test facility. The Marquardt ramjet engine developed from the Lockheed X-7 program for the Beaumark missile, was modified for the D-21. This was one of the most significant time and cost-saving factors in the MD-21 program. In this scene, the frangible nose cone is being attached. This long metal tail fairing, designed to reduce drag in the mated configuration, was also installed at the time of pre-flight assembly. Checkouts complete, the first D-21 was then moved into position for attachment to the launching aircraft's dorsal pylon. Operational systems to be mated included the electrical umbilical, fuel lines, and the prime source of auxiliary power, the air turbine. Structural attachment consisted of hook devices located forward and aft in the pylon to take vertical loads, while a large center post and hook are provided to take side and rolling loads. All was then in readiness for the first flight of the MD-21. This flight was conducted on December 22, 1964. At this point in the pre-flight preparation, the destruct unit was placed within the D-21's forward section. Approaching the predetermined release point, the launch control officer turned on the fuel and ignited the engine. After engine thrust reached the necessary level, the launch thrust light came on. The burner pressure gauge verified proper engine thrust. Control officer then threw the aircraft flight control system final check switch. All lights indicated mission go readiness. The launch switch was activated. The drone separated and climbed out to the successful program flight. 